diagram below shows a curve with the equation y equals, then we have in brackets, x plus 2, then x minus 2, then x plus 1. Calculate the total area of the two shaded regions. If we want to work out the area of this first region, which I've coloured in yellow, then what we could do is integrate the curve between this value and this value, which I'm going to label as A and B for now. So what I'm going to write down is the integration x plus 2, x minus 2, x plus 1 between B and A. If I have a look at this second area, which we've coloured in green, then we could integrate the curve between this point here, this value, so B again, and this value here, which we're going to label as C. So to help us work out the second area, we're going to integrate x plus 2, x minus 2, x plus 1, multiply together between C and B. Therefore, to work out the area, we need to know what these three points are. We need to work out A, B and C. Now, A, B and C are the points of intersection of the curve with the x-axis. Now, if the curve intersects the x-axis and we need to work out what those points are, then remember any points on the x-axis, the y value would be zero. So what we can do is substitute y equal to zero into the equation. So what we can write down, instead of y equal to the x plus 2, x minus 2, x plus 1, we can write zero is equal to that. Therefore, what we know is that x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 1 is equal to zero. Now, now any numbers multiplied together... If the answer is zero, that means that one of them must therefore be equal to zero. So we can now write down that either x plus 2 is equal to zero, or x minus 2 is equal to zero, or x plus 1 is equal to zero. This means that x is either equal to minus 2, or x is equal to 2, or x is equal to minus 1. Therefore, what we've found out here now are the three values of x where the curve would intersect the x-axis. We can therefore see that a would be the minus 2, b would be the minus 1, and c would be 2. We can now change a, b, and c to be minus 2, minus 1, and 2. So therefore we have the definite integral of x plus 2, x minus 2, x plus 1 between minus 1 and minus 2. This is going to allow us to work out the area that's shaded in yellow on the diagram. And we've also got the definite integral, same, same equation of the curve, but this time we've got different limits. We've got 2 minus 1, the B and C on the diagram. This will help us work out the area that's shaded in green on the diagram. Our next stage is to integrate. However, at the moment we have x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 1. We're going to need to expand the brackets first. So if we look at the three brackets, it, it may be sensible to look at the first two and expand these first. So we've got x plus 2 times x minus 2. This will be um, x squared minus 4. So if we then multiply x squared minus 4 by x plus 1, this will be plus x squared minus 4x minus 4, which is of the right format to then be able to integrate. So we need to integrate this, and we're going to then look at the values minus 1, minus 2 as the limit, and we'll do the same thing then for the limits of 2 and minus 1. Remember with integration, we increase the power by 1, then we divide by that power. So the integration of the curve will be x to the power of 4 over 4, then x cubed over 3. The integration of minus 4x is minus 4x squared over 2, but then because you've got the minus 4 over 2 there, that will simplify to be minus 2x squared. The integration of minus 4 is minus 4x. Then we have the limits minus 1, minus 2. So the second part will be exactly the same thing, however we've just got the different limits of 2 and minus 1. So if we look at the yellow area, the area that's shaded in yellow, then what we're going to do is substitute minus 1 in. 
to the integration of the curve, and then we're going to substitute minus 2 in to the integration of the curve, and we're going to work out the difference between them. Um, this will represent the area that's shaded in yellow on the diagram. You can type all this in or go on your calculator, but you can easily make a mistake when you do that. So it is sensible to try and break it down in stages. Um, so if I look at the first brackets and each term separately, we will end up with 1 over 4 minus 1 over 3 minus 2 plus 4. And then the second set of brackets, we would have 4 minus 8 over 3 minus 8 plus 8. And the first bracket will then simplify to be 23 over 12. The second one would be 4 over 3. So you end up with 23 over 12 minus 4 over 3, which gives us an answer of 7 over 12. So if the definite integral is 7 over 12, then that means that the area that's shaded in yellow is also 7 over 12. We're going to do something similar now for the green area by looking at the same integration because it's the same curve it's it's the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis um, between though different limits because it's between when x is minus one and x is two so you substitute two in first and then you substitute minus one in now normally i would show the substitution of minus one because i'm running out of space and we've already done this in the first Pass. I'm going to just put the answer down because we know we've worked it out already and we, we can see it's 23 over 12. If I show the substitution of 2 in stages, we would end up with 4 plus 8 over 3 minus 8 minus 8. This will simplify to be minus 28 over 3 minus 23 over 12, which simplifies in the end to be minus 45 over now, the minus just indicates that, that the area is below the x-axis. The size of the area is 45 over 4. So you disregard any minus signs when you're looking at area. So when we look at the total area of the two shaded regions, it is going to be 7 over 12, but we're not going to add minus 45 over 4. We're going to just add 45 over 4. This gives us a final area of 71 over 6, or as a decimal, that would be 11.833. Just want to have a little look about uh, the distinction between finding the area delineated by a function and the integral. Now, in the situation in the question, we have this curve. And... It goes minus 2, minus 1, 0 somewhere, and then 2. And what they're asking for, as was explained, was the total area. So that was this orange area here. It's meant to be orange, but my app is not obviously not working very well. And the green area here. And so, in the question, what we had to do was integrate between minus 2 and minus 1, and then add the negative of the integral between minus 1 and 2. Because the integral between minus 1 and 2, because it goes below x equals 0, is going to give a negative area, because we've got negative x values when we're calculating the areas. Now, in fact, if we just flip the second one up, then we could say that this is equal to, and, and, and I know I'm not writing the functions in, but that's just to say bother. If we turn it upside down, if we were to integrate between 2 and minus 1, that would have given us the same answer. Either way, we have to split it into two different integrals. Now, it's worth thinking about why would we ever want to work out what the integral is, because if we work out the integral between minus 2 and 2, then that's going to be the brownish area, 
take away the greenish area. And that, of course, won't give the same answer as working out the actual areas. So the situation where we might want to look at a curve like this, but we might want to find the total integral, so we might want to leave this part as negative, would be an example, could be if we were looking at a v against t graph, because the integral of v dt is the displacement, so s, and we want to allow for the fact that under the line the particle is moving in the opposite direction to the original, so it's sort of going backwards and reducing its displacement from the starting position. And there's lots of other situations where we want to know what the integral is as opposed to the areas between the curve and the axis.